What is happening, Magnus Sites? Oh boy. The news just keeps on a coming. I was actually about to just relax for a little bit. Oh, this is a very exciting, interesting time in human history. And I'm going to try to cover everything I can that I'm interested in. Are you ready? Wow, this is wild. Oh, you ain't want to bring it up on here, huh? Can we, can we do it right? There we go. Do it right, baby. All right. This is wild. We have some breaking news this hour. The Justice Department has just unsealed criminal charges in a thwarted Iranian plot to kill President-elect Donald Trump. David Sputton has the latest. David. Kaylee, we have known there All has right. been a steady threat stream toward the life of President-elect yes, Donald there Trump. Yes, there By the way, what are they going to do about all those people that were saying all that stuff on Twitter? Someone put out like a video that showed like all these accounts that were threatening his life. Like, what are they going to do about that? Cause that's serious stuff. Cause you, you know, it's, it's, if it never, you know, occurred, I, you know, you could probably take it less seriously, you know, but it's been a two attempts and we've already heard about, a, you know, other planned attempts on him in Iran. This is one more example. According to the Justice Department, specifically the Southern District of New York, they're looking for a 51-year-old who they believe resides in Iran. His name is Farhad Shakiri. And according mm -hmm. to the Justice Department, he was working with the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps on a plot to kill then former President Trump, now President-elect Trump, just a few months ago said, quote, it would cost a lot of a, a huge amount of money. That's what he allegedly told uh, the folks back in Iran. Now, separately, uh, he is also accused of employing multiple associates in New York City to surveil and murder an unnamed U.S. citizen that opposed the Iranian regime in New York. Wow. Now, Kaylee, this all stems mm. from former President Trump's uh, directive to kill General Qasem Soleimani back in January of 2020. Since then, National security officials have told Fox News the threat stream toward President Alex uh, Trump's life has really increased. This is one more example. So his name is Farhad Shakiri, and he is accused of working. Man, they're going to have to triple security on him. I, I know he's probably got the highest security in the world right now. And if he doesn't right now, he will once he's sworn in. With the Iran National Guard Corps to kill President-elect Donald Trump. Can David, we? I want to ask you one question about what you just said there, and, and that sure. is the killing of Soleimani. We had back on September 27th an indictment against three Iranians in the hacking of Trump's campaign. And at the top of that indictment, something stood out with me stood out to me, and it was the date, the date at which the hacking attempts began to target Trump at the time he didn't have a campaign, but to target Trump specifically came at the direction after the killing of Soleimani. We also know a dozen Trump officials were on an Iranian hit list. The death of Soleimani, that foreign policy decision, minute, has caused many? these outpouring of actions from the Iranians and an Iranian hit list. A dozen Trump officials were on an Iranian Damn. hit list. The death of Soleimani, that foreign policy decision, has caused these outpouring of actions from the Iranians and the subsequent indictments. Oh, absolutely. And this indictment today from the Justice Department uses so those interesting buttons on her jacket there. I've never seen anything like that before. Khomeini's name and hmm. uses the word vengeance. Um, the fact hmm. that Trump ordered the killing of Soleimani, he's been dealing with these threats for years since that. So this is absolutely uh... related uh, to the killing of Soleimani, according to the Justice Department. But the most important thing is this man remains at large, 51 years old, uh, wow. lives in Iran. That's where he is believed to be hmm. right now. And as we look at a picture of uh, the late Soleimani on the television. Okay. Game. David, thank you. Thank you. Martha, wow. I don't know that that is discussed enough. Um, Donald Trump, when he made that decision to kill Soleimani, and in concert with Robert O'Brien, who was National Security Advisor, and Pompeo, who was Secretary of State. See, I remember hearing that name. It's vague, but I don't remember the whole situation around it. Hopefully they, they tell me here. All of these Job individuals became the targets of Iranian assassination. I am not sure many other presidents would have sat back 
and said, let's do this, knowing the repercussions for potentially national security and for themselves. Well, we know that at least one of them didn't do that. Um, because it certainly was on the radar during the Obama administration as well, what mm. Soleimani was doing. He was, um, you know, doing nuclear weapons trade and development. It was the person who was behind so much of this. So um, it is a very uh, bold move that was taken, and they have lived with the repercussions of it all these years. I mean, uh, Secretary Pompeo still walks around with a, a number of security guards everywhere he goes. It changed their lives, really. Uh, forever, and I would just also just mention that the other two men who were arrested in this, who are U.S. on U.S. soil, um, appear to have been involved with the targeting of. I, I believe it. This is about the Masi Alinejad case in Brooklyn, uh, where a man with an AK-47 style weapon showed up on her doorstep. She's a huge critic of the Iranian government. So this is a large scale effort by the Iranian government to kill not only President Trump and others around him, um, but anyone who is a critic. You know, Guy, wow. after the killing of Soleimani, I remember some critics saying, oh, this was not a wise move because Iran may retaliate and this could lead to a war, etc. That criticism was unfounded. What it led to were three Middle East peace deals, four actually. And this is news that came out overnight. We heard three days since Tuesday, three days. Trump is not in office, but the prospect of Trump being in office. Yeah, like Putin's already open to discussing peace. Um... China said something about peace, like, you know, doing things, you know, hey, all right, let's, you know what I mean? Um, um, they already want to, you know, handle things with Israel and uh, what's going on with Gaza and stuff. Uh, like, everybody want to chill right now. That's wild, right? Everybody want to talk now. That is wild. And all this time... With Biden and Kamala, they didn't? Come on now. This is, and the news is this. Qatar has told Hamas officials in the country, yeah, Hamas. you are yeah. no longer welcome here. What changed? What changed was the election of Donald Trump. Mm. They see him coming in power, and all of the Middle East is on notice. So you mentioned some yeah. of the names. Of course, Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, Robert O'Brien, Brian Hook was another one. These are people behind the Trump administration's very successful maximum pressure campaign against the Iranian regime for four years, taking out Soleimani, helping the Israelis rather than fighting them all the time. And Iran responded, now a very weakened Iran, I would say, has responded desperately to try to keep this crew of people out of office and out of power. We talk a lot about Russian interference. How about Iranian interference in our elections? Well, it didn't work. Because now the Trump administration is coming back in and a cast of characters looking like these same folks, maybe the exact same people wow. in certain respects, will be back in authority. There's a new sheriff in town in the United States. The regime knows it mm -hmm. and things are going to get much tougher for them very soon. And in the next 73 days, Emily, I do worry about some of those officials who may be coming in, some of whom do not have security. That's right. But you know who does? Thanks to the amazing work of Open the Books, founded by Adam Andrzejewski, we know that Fauci... Taxpayer money spent $15 million on protecting Anthony Fauci. And by the way, that was just for eight and a half months. Of this year alone, from January through September 20th, taxpayers paid for $15 million worth of private uh, security for Anthony Fauci through the U.S. Marshals. What is unknown, by the way, is whether that contract was extended. So it remains to be seen whether, in fact, he is under to the tune of millions. And look, I'm not saying someone doesn't deserve taxpayer funded security. What I am saying is that those individuals certainly do per everything that everyone has said through their peace, through strength, their maximum pressure, the fact that they actually have vertebrae, that is why they deserve secure, um, security sure. at our behest. And that's also by, why the way, we should maintain our faith and our investment in the United States Secret Service. So that too needs to be risen to the level that these individuals deserve. And someone who did deserve security was my former colleague, National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, who was followed by two Middle Eastern men in France, was pulled from an event, and then guess what? His security was yanked. And I'm told that several Trump officials intervened trying to get the White House to keep his detail. It was yanked. By who? Kim Cheadle. Anyway, last question to you, Kennedy. Mm. I think the Middle East being on notice is a big thing with Trump coming in. And I believe we are going to see a... Yeah, y'all had to tell me that that was Kennedy from MTV. I remember when I saw her before on something, I said something about the glasses or something. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I had totally forgotten about Kennedy.
Saudi peace deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel and normalization of relations in a complete remaking of the Middle East on Trump's watch. Yeah, I think you're going to see an extension and evolution of the Abraham Accords. And I, I you know, obviously it's, it's much better for everyone in the Middle East if that is the tack that they take. If they lean toward peace and capitalism versus death and endless war, because there's no upside for anyone. And the, they're finally starting to realize that. And, you know, also we were talking about some of the language that, you know, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy used. I'm going to fight to the death. Maybe we stop employing those kinds of phrases in the United States because Donald Trump has had an assassination attempt on his life, two of them, actually. And now you have this actionable intelligence where um, a man who is now hiding in Iran was working with his prison buddies when he was in prison in the U.S., to take out American citizens at uh, the Iranian regime's behest. These are not theoretical. These are actual, actionable things that are going on every single day. And yes, peace is much, much better. And I think mm -hmm. we will see more of that. Yes, and I to your point, so. let, is, let us retire the phrase, fight to the death. Probably a good thing to do. Here. Yeah, well, um, I'm glad to hear that everybody's starting to get in line and want to talk and discuss peace. Um, I'm happy about that. I am extremely happy about that. So hopefully everything is cool. Hopefully everything is cool and kosher and we can get back to enjoying life again instead of worrying about strife. That rhymes, I hate to play the game, bars. Now that I've spoken, what do you all think about this? Comment down below and let me know, and I will see you in the next video. 10 million subscribers. <gasps> Woo!